And we're live. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Closer Show. So this shit right here is staying right here all year. But this shouldn't be stressful at all. That's when Pop Hunter just because he wouldn't give a James Private Stock Lead. Let's go. <laughs> Test, 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 test. How about now? Did this fix it? Did this fix it? Testing, 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 testing. It still says no audio. What is this, man? It was just working. But you can? It says you can. Oh, now it says you can. Okay. 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 We're just going to leave it like this. We're just going to leave it like this. This is such a pain. So the reason we had to delay is because of this exact problem. I couldn't get the audio to come through from my mic properly. So I went through all of these hoops to get this started. And then the application that I used went through an update that's supposed to make it easier to use, but I didn't have any training on it. You know, I, I knew the way to use the software before it updated, but then they completely changed the user interface and everything relevant to it, uh, which really just kind of threw a wrench at things. So we're just going to leave it like this. It seems like it is working. How are you guys? I hope you're well. We're going to just cut out that whole two, three minute stretch and we're going to redo the intro. So this is the closer show, everybody. The closer show is a very simple concept. We're going to be calling highly motivated inbound leads off of iSpeed to lead.com. And then we're going to be uh, just closing them live. That's it. That's it. And if you guys want to see more of my content, my Instagram's right there. What's more uh, right there? Liam B. Closing. Come on in close. Come on in, guys. You guys are too far out there. Take a seat. Welcome. Welcome to the desk. This is in my $10 million office studio here. 
We're going to just be doing some deals as we always do. I think the first thing, first things first, let's just get speed to lead pulled up. Let's see what we got. And I want you guys to decide what sort of leads we're going to be working with today. Um, some rules for them is we're going to be looking at clearance leads only because I want to save the hot leads for those of y'all who are buying. But everybody, this right here is I speed to lead. I got to log into my other account. Hang on. I'm in, the, I'm in my admin account. That don't help. All right. All right. Hang on. Hang on. I know you guys are giddy. Boom. Guys, this right here is I speed to lead. For those of you guys who have never seen this before, the URL is uh, it's like right here. See that? There it is. There's a link in the description as well. So what we're going to be looking at is, look, we got KM in Paris, Texas. She filled out the form on her own. So K reached out to us, filled out our form, and said she's selling because of emergency reasons. The property's in fair condition. It apparently needs paint inside. It's owner-occupied. She's owned the property six to nine years. She's up to date on the mortgage, and it is not listed. That's all right. That's all right. Let's see here. Oh, oh these are clearance leads. We got to get to clearance leads. What's going on? Boom. Boom. And guys, by the way, how does my mic sound? Yo, nobody bought this. Phoenix, Arizona, moving from the United States. They want to sell in a month. It's vacant. It needs cabinets, which probably means it needs a little bit more than that. They're up to date on their mortgage. That could be a deal. Anything that you get under contract to Phoenix is a deal. Anything and everything. Wow. Look at every single one of these are inbound. Every single one of these people reached out to us. Amazing. So before we dive deep into the calling these inbound leads, I want to talk to you guys about something very near and dear to my heart, which is outbound leads. What is the difference between inbound and outbound and why am I qualified to tell you about them? Well, I built an outbound sales team. We had 30 people on the floor. I hired all of them, and we were doing tens of thousands of dials a day for the retail side of real estate. So I'm very, very cultured in the way of outbound. And what I'm going to share with you guys, because I know most of you guys are doing outbound, and I want to help you guys get more deals. I want to provide that value to you. So I'm going to talk to you guys about how to set up your outbound for massive success. And this is just going to be a quick little spiel that I prepared for you. So first, what is the difference between outbound and inbound? It is the method that the lead comes to you. Now. Cold calling, all of that, that is marketing. It is not sales. But when you're reaching out to somebody, that is outbound. When somebody's reaching out to you, so if it's a referral, somebody finds your SEO page, if they find your paid ad, and then they are reaching out to you, then that is going to be an inbound lead. So in the industry, inbound leads are always going to be significantly hotter than outbound because in outbound, what you're doing is you're fishing for intent. That's it. You're not looking for anything else. You're just looking for intent to sell their home. And when they're inbound, that intent is already pre-built into them. They've already reached out. They filled out your form. They have that something inherently built in. So in outbound, what you need to stop thinking of it as is sales, and you need to start thinking of it like a marketer. You have this giant list of data. And that giant list of data is a big block of dirt that you need to work through. You need to put it in a giant machine that has different levels of, uh, of strains that are going to um, work all of that through until at the very end, it's going to take out your diamonds, your gold, your emeralds, your, all those minerals that you want to keep, you can exchange for cash and let all the dirt pass on through. So that's what you're doing. You're just sifting and sifting and sifting. So what you need to do is build that machine. What a lot of people do is, A, they either don't organize it, they just do a random call block through it. And what that's equivalent to is you have this giant pile of dirt and you're just digging through it by hand. You're pushing everything to the side, you're kind of looking through it. And so the only stuff that you're going to find while doing that are the big giant chunks of gold that are just shining like day. You can just pick them straight out, they're right there, they're easy to find, and you don't have to do any work for those. Now, those are really good for your first deals, but if you want to build a consistent business where you're not just chasing your next big payday, you need to build a system. And building a system is a lot easier than you think. In building a system, 
what you're going to do is just create a procedure that you're going to follow every time. And that procedure can be very rudimentary all the way to being super advanced. So a very simple system that you can do is just blocking each of your types of marketing. So when you're looking at it, just set up a spreadsheet. Each column is each attempt on that block of data. The furthest left column, that's going to be the name of that block of data. So you can do like vacant September 7th. That means it's a vacant list that you pulled on September 7th. And then you're just going to have call attempts number one, call attempt number two, call attempt number three. Because believe it or not, when you call through a piece of data one time, that does not mean it is expended because most of those were no contacts. In any call block, 95% are generally going to be no contacts. And so just because you didn't contact them doesn't mean they're not elite. So the first time you call through it, that block of data is not used yet. So what you're going to do is you're just going to roll it back into a dialer, maybe tomorrow, maybe the same day, you're going to call it again. And then you're going to call it again. And the important thing is each time you call through it, you need to be tracking your numbers very closely. You need to be tracking how many dials were made, how many contacts were made from the dials, how many leads were generated from the contacts, and how much time you were on the phone. Because now you can start figuring out how you're going to hire people. You can assign a dollar amount to the time spent dialing, which means that then you can, spend, you can assign a dollar amount to the number of dials that can get done in that time, which means that you can get a dollar amount assigned to the number of contacts you make. And that means you get a dollar amount assigned to each lead. And then you're going to determine what your cost per lead is. Then you move it to your sales process, which is completely separate. Your sales process and your marketing process are 100% separate parts of the business. Don't mingle them. If you mingle them, you're going to have this giant grotesque chunk of data. You're not going to know who needs to be followed up with, when they need to be followed up with. It's going to be a mess. Keep them system separate. Then when you're doing, when you're done calling through them, if you like text marketing, you can intermingle texting into those calls, or you can just do three calls, three texts, or two texts. And when you're tracking those now, you can start to make data driven decisions. You can make a decision on, hey, you know what? I called this three times. On the third time that I called it, I only had a 2% contact rate. The first time I had a 15% contact rate. That 2% is not worth my time. Why would I spend my time on that 2%? So now you can begin to cut out that third dial. And you can test it across multiple different uh, types of lists or types of data. Maybe on a driving for dollars list where the contact rate is going to be higher because those people are less worn out by all the other wholesalers, you're going to call them that third time. And maybe you even it might incorporate a fourth time. But the, pro, uh, the, the goal is to create a regimented and documented process because you cannot hire somebody if you do not have a process. A lot of people, they just go straight to hiring VAs. They get their first deal and say, you know what, I'm going to get a VA. The VA is going to solve my problems. But the two things that they get wrong with it is, A, they expect the VA to do the sales for them. They try to teach them a pitch. They try to teach them how to get to the contract, how to negotiate. They want the VA to be a closer. The VA will never do that. They don't quite understand American culture. There's usually a language barrier. And a lot of you guys want cheap VAs. A lot of you guys want really cheap VAs. And in this world, you get what you pay for. There is no cheap VA that is going to be as good as anybody that you can hire locally who has a little bit of sales experience and understands the culture and knows how to talk to people. They're completely separate. So the VA, so that's the first thing. Most people don't recognize what a VA is meant to be used for. And then the second part is they don't have a clear protocol for their VA. That protocol is what's going to bring them from possibly a D or C player up to a B plus to an A player. Right? Think about that. The protocol is what's going to bring them from a D or C player to a B or A player. And so what you need to do is build their time for them. So you can sit down and just time block their day. You know, hey, you know what? I'm paying for six hours of your time. Hour one, you're doing this. Hour two, you're doing this. Hour three, you're doing this. And you're going to go on lunch. And you're going to come back. And then hour four, five, and six, you're going to do these things. When you set their time up in that way, then there's no confusion on what they need to do. They are going to be a part of your machine. And once they master that protocol and they are performing exceptionally well, they're performing to the level that you might even surpass what you could perform to, uh, at, in that same role, that's when you're going to start allowing them to create changes to the process as long as it doesn't dip in their productivity, but they can expand the process and do higher value tasks that they believe will get them more income on the back end or will generate more deals. And you can start giving them commission, feeding them into that. But those, so those are the things I wanted to talk about was create, creating a documented system and approach to working through those blocks of data, 
understanding how to create a protocol so you can hire people into that protocol and understanding the difference between marketing and sales, which is the intent. In marketing, you're finding the intent. In sales, that is everything that happens after the intent has been found. Now, something to note is that you can do marketing and sales inside of one call. If you know that you're a closer and you are doing your marketing and you happen to just to segue that into a sales call, you find the intent and then you segue into a sales call, perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. You don't have to separate it. But when you're be having beginner employees or you're, having, uh, you're hiring VAs, it is really fantastic to separate it because that way you can make data-driven decisions and creating a documented approach that is not inherent to your skill set. On the clearance list, does it show how many times it has been bought? Yes, it will show how many times it's been bought if you are on premium mode. If you are on premium mode. And one thing that is really important to note is every single lead, no matter if it is brand new, if it's hot, if it's clearance, whatever stage it's in, they all come with refund guarantees, which you will see on checkout. I think by default, it's three days, um, maybe even five. And then there's an option for like an extra 5% to extend it for, to seven days. So on that front, you are going to get a refund if A, it's under contract with the wholesaler, B, it's listed on the MLS, C, it's sold, or D, that it's, it's impossible to connect with them. Their data is all bad, and we're constantly filtering those out. So usually clearance leads do not have the problem that they are uh, impossible to get in contact with because if somebody's already submitted a lead that says, hey, you know what, this, I couldn't get in contact. I tried all their phones. They're all disconnected. They'll never respond. Here's all my text, emails, phone calls. None of these connected. Then we're going to delist that lead as soon as possible. And we're always improving our processes to make sure that those don't get generated in the first place and those don't get listed on our site. So it, it's always a constant uh, improvement. Some things that we've done over the past couple of months is A, we've increased the number of steps in our form. So our form is proprietary. There's nobody else in the space that has a, uh, a uh, user form that is as integrated and as trust building as ours. Nobody. Nobody. We've, we have funneled millions of dollars through this and we're testing on every single data point to get it more and more efficient. So we're going to get more data and that weeds out tire kickers. People are just, you know, I want to see what my house is worth. They're not going to go through a multi-step form that requires minutes of their time. They're like, okay, I thought this was going to be an easy thing. Nope. If somebody's motivated to sell, then they're like, oh yeah, I need to answer these. These questions make sense. The second thing is that we have a really fantastic SMS verification software in play now. We used to have it. We didn't have it for a while because the SMS would come two, three, four minutes later. And then, of course, they've already left the form. Like they're waiting for the text. And like, yeah, no, I don't want to wait for this. And then the third thing, and this is something. So, I mean, we ended up getting a brand new software that does it and it delivers a text immediately. So we get that SMS verification. So you'll see on the site, SMS verified. That means they have a cell phone and they verified it right then and there. And the third thing is that the seller uh, identity has been verified by our outbound team. We hired an outbound team in our company that reaches out to every single lead. And as long as they get in contact, they confirm the identity and they confirm the motivation. There's an extra tag that gets added to each of those leads. Claudio, thanks for hosting the show, guys. Always leading the way. We're trying our best. There's a lot of really fantastic shows in this space. We've just got to do our part. What's up, real estate freaks? What's up, baby? How are you doing? How are you doing? Amazing. Guys, that is all the spiel that I have. I think let's get down. Let's get a dial on them. All right. I'm going to scroll through. I'm going to read a couple of these leads, and I want you guys just to put in the chat what lead you guys want me to, uh, what lead you guys want me to call. We've got David P. Harper's Field, New York. He wants to sell without showings to multifamily. It's in good condition. The repair is none. It's in pristine condition. It's owner occupied. He wants to sell in a month. Yes, I own this property. 20 to 29 years. There's no mortgage. It's not listed. This is a different type of sale. When you're talking to somebody who's a tired multifamily owner, it's not a very emotional sale. This is something that's much more tactical. And it just depends on the numbers and what kind of a discount you can get. So the, the, the basic numbers you want to look at are, what's this cap rate looking like? Right. What's the purchase price comparative to what the rent rolls are coming out to? Then you're just going to factor in vacancy rate, um, um, your maintenance costs, uh, whether or not the uh, units are individually metered, uh, factoring in for those. And then you can make your decision based upon that. The numbers just have to work. I mean, as they do in any deal, Jacob C, who's that? Jacob B here in Phoenix. 
because we've got Jacob B in Phoenix. He's moving to the United States, properties in good condition, kitchen cabinets. It's vacant, wants to sell in a month. He's owned the property for six to nine years. They're up to date on their mortgage and it's not listed. Okay. okay. Wow. Mark M in Como, Mississippi. Divorce, relocating, retirement elsewhere. There's a lot of pain involved in this one. Claudio, I will jump back and do that, Jacob. I just want to read a couple of these other ones. We can plan out our calls for the day. Roof needs replacement. I don't know where replacement went. Air conditioning, paint, paint outside, landscaping, bathrooms, and work. Owner occupied needs to sell ASAP. Own the property 20 to 29 years. That is some pain right there. Pembroke Pines. This sounds like a very wealthy area, if I do say so myself. Moving closer to family. It's in fair condition. The paint inside, kitchen cabinets, it's owner occupied. Needs to sell ASAP. Ah, they're a wholesaler though. We can try and work a JV deal with uh, Mr. Troy G, but usually not worth it. Unless you ever, I mean, guys, the things that I'm good at are lead generation and lead conversion. Selling the deal side of things, that is by far my least developed skill set in the real estate space. So that's, that for me is particularly uh, a poor choice. Let me find another really just fantastic looking lead. Why are all these on August 31st? Generated a ton of them. Okay, you know what? We're just going to stick with Jacob B here. Let's call this man up and look how easy it is to get the lead. Give a coupon code, which we give out frequently. Let's just get this thing. All right, let's talk here. Oh, what? Did this guy not have? Yeah, because the phone number he put in was zero 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 zero. And we do get a whole bunch of extra numbers provided by batch skip tracing. Um, yeah, but. That would be a refund immediately. We want to get you guys back on the phone. So that would be a refund. Let's keep searching here. What have we got? What have we got? County's a bit too small. That's from the family in Sarasota. You know what? Oh, it's an agent wholesaler. Darn. What a bummer. All right. Let's do Justin in Elgin, South Carolina, just outside of Charlotte. Because I know a lot of people buying stuff out here. All right, we got a phone number for the boy. All right, let's dial it up. 
Oh, it's doing this thing again. Where it won't let me call through Google Voice. One, let's just test this here. Yep, love it. Let's dial it up. Your body language, your facial expressions, these are all going to come through on the phone, guys. Man, am I excited! Whew. Can't wait for this guy to pick up. Justin, I know it's Wednesday at noon. You're probably at work, but you know, we got to negotiate the sale of your home. If you leave a brief message, I do not want to leave a brief, brief message. Down straight back. We're doing the triple dial today. It's a nice house. This would be a million dollars in California. Justin, come on, baby. I want to see that pick up. How many of you guys use Twitter? I'm 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 interested. I just got it and I just started posting recently. All right, Justin must be at work. We'll give him a pass this time. We will give him a pass this time. All right, let's see. Let's see. Let's add in some extra filters here. Property, let's do fair or terrible. John B. in St. Louis, Missouri. Moving closer to family, but the roof needs replacement, paint inside, paint outside. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's pick this bad boy up. Once again, smiling. And dial it. Hello? Hey, John, how are you? I'm fine. Say, we've never spoken before, but you did fill out my website. You were looking for an offer on your home. Uh, yeah, I got I got something going on. Oh, I mean, like contract signed, like it's a done deal. I don't have any room. No, I I, I don't I don't have anything signed, but we we in discussion. So you can't be in discussion with anybody else. <laughs> no, no, I don't think you can be this. Yeah. You don't th well, you don't know what I have to offer, man. Yeah, they on my level, man. Yeah, yeah, everybody, you know, they talking, but they don't want to go to law, you know, or whatever. But uh, this one right here, I'm gonna stick with this right here. What I what I got going on? What happens if they never put pen on paper? Say again. What happens if they never put pen on paper? Oh, if I don't put it put it on paper, it's a done it's a done deal. You know what I'm saying? You what can't go with it. But it got to be on paper. But what happens if they never do? Oh, well, I'm done with it. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's plain and simple. 
So how long did they say till they get you a contract delivered to your door? No, I'm only in a couple of days, man. I'm only in a couple of days. Man. Yeah. So you don't want to get a contract signed with me even if I offer more money? Nah, you got to offer me 100 grand or more. I got to offer you 100 grand more than they do? Yeah, no, no, 100 grand or more. Let me take... Look, the property address that I have is just 3637 Ohio Avenue. What's the uh, zip code? 63118. 63118, okay. And so then they offered you 100000 for it? You got to do 100 grand or more. 100 grand or more. I mean, what type of condition is it in right now? It's, it's going as is. It's, it's been in condition, living condition, very good. Like livable? Could I put it? Somebody can just move. Somebody can just move right on in. Have you tried to rent it out yet? No, I ain't trying to do that, man. I ain't. I ain't I'm not staying here to do that. I'm in the Midwest. I'm, I'm, I'm going to um, East Coast. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking at a hundred grand, huh? I mean, it seems yeah. pretty doable. Oh, it's, it's doable. I know that. So give me a call when you, when you got to figure it out. What about parking? Is there a driveway for people to park on? Well, I got a uh, detached uh, two-car garage, but we park in the front. You know, I got two cars out there in the front and two cars in the garage. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, we can do 100000 right now. No, no, no. Somebody's on that. You know what I'm saying? I thought you said you need 100 Yeah, I said you got to do 100 or more. But somebody on 100 you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm telling you, you got to go more than 100000 oh, What's your magic number? Let me know. Yeah. If you give me a contract with 110, that, that'll be it. 110, I would have to get approval from my underwriting department. I can do 105 right now. Nah, nah, 110. In order to move that out, you know what I got going on, you, you, you got to be 110. You're a shrewd negotiator, man. <laughs> What's why, I mean, this place is beautiful. What's got you wanting to sell it anyways? Oh, I'm, I'm going. I'm, I'm going to East Coast. I'm going home, man. You know, I'm going back to my area. I'm finished. I'm retired and all that good stuff. So, just getting out of Dodge, okay? Yeah, I'm going back to you know, where I'm near by family and friends. You know. All right, can I just put you on hold for about two minutes? I just got to talk to my underwriting department. I sent, I just sent him over all the details. Is that a yes? I didn't. No, I'm waiting on you. You know what I'm saying? I'm waiting on you. You're in you know? Just give me a few minutes. All right, boss. All right. Okay. I am real confused by this. This place is worth four hundred thousand dollars. He wants a hundred and ten. This is a three to four thousand square foot home, four bed, four bath in St. Louis, Missouri. I mean, this thing can rent out for. 2000 easy. If you rent it out by the room, probably like 32. 110 for this? What's going on? It needs a roof replacement, he said. What else did he say? Roof replacement, paint, inside, paint, outside. It's got covered parking. Yeah. 
Do you have the correct address? Yeah, I even confirmed it. I even confirmed it. And it matches everything that he's putting on. He put in the form. 110. 110. That's just throwing me off so much. Yeah, I mean, shit, I'll do 110 all day. I mean, this place is gorgeous. Brick built, 1908. I have no estimate coming in below 350. I usually don't run numbers live, but this is just too good to be true. Something about this is just too good to be true. All right, let me just add a property real quick. I just want to do one more piece of due diligence on this. One hundred and ten thousand. He bought it in twenty eleven for two two hundred ten. Did he say three hundred? Three hundred. No, he said a hundred thousand. One hundred. Y'all heard that too. All right. Mr. John, you still there, boss? Yeah, I'm here, man. So underwriting, let me know. We can move forward with 110,000. That is cool with you? That's cool with me. Cool. Can you do uh, virtual yeah. contracts? You got an email that you know how to sign contracts with? No. No. No, you, got to, you want to do all this on a physical paper? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to hop off the phone with you, get that written up. I'm going to have my assistant give you a call. And then we'll just send out a okay. mobile notary. So she'll just get your information wherever you are. We can get a mobile notary out there and uh, get that thing signed. Okay, you bet. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, could you just, uh, do you have a pen and paper on hand? Uh, no, I don't. No, oh. I just want you to take down my information to make sure you don't lose it. Okay, why don't you just text it to me at this number? Cool. All right, I'll text you there and uh, we'll be in touch soon. Okay, John? Okay, man. Sweet. All right. Talk soon. Something about that's weird. I mean, there was. One moment, gang. I'm just gonna call my boy David Olds so we can just get on it. I just, he's gonna be my transaction coordinator for this anyways. Just give me one moment, gang. I'm about to make some money, baby. Did I miss your call? Cool. Couldn't get in touch with David, just sent him the details. 
I'm going to text this guy my details to make sure that he's got it. Look at that, guys. We're getting a mobile node re on it as we speak. That is a $100,000 plus deal assignment easily. That one, I mean, just shy. I'm usually, usually, I got to put in a little bit of work for these. Okay. There's money right there. Who wants to go on another call? I do. I do. I really want to hear some good calls. That's what I want to do. I really want to listen to some good calls. I always get inspired by that. Make it look easy, brother. That was easy. That was easy. There was nothing difficult about that deal right there at all. In fact, you guys are going to see, I, I, I probably, I, I felt like I was struggling for a moment there because I was like, this can't be right. He wants 100000 for this place. He's got 4,500 square feet of land. The building itself, 3,200. It's four bed, four bath. In the heart of St. Louis. In the heart of St. Louis. And he bought it in 2011 for 210,000. He bought it for 210. And I I I I want 100 percent confirm this is the right house. He is the owner of record. It's built in 1906. Central air, central heating, brick built. Ah. Why is it assessed at 103? What the fuck? Yo, guys, I don't know what is going on with this thing. This is a confusing home. My man is running. It's, it's, it's. Huh? The tax information is that its market value is 103,000. It's assessed values at 19,000. He pays 1,600 a year in property tax. In 2013, he got a loan on it for 217000 That's a 30-year, 969 a month.
Yeah, man, I don't know what is up with that. I need a set of expert eyes on that. I'm going to get Mr. David Olds on it, and he will let me know what is up and what's down. There's something we are not seeing about this bad boy. There is something we are not seeing. And it's going to be a good time for me to learn. It is going to be a good time for me to learn. I got nothing else to say about that. That is just a wild deal. Would like to see the follow-up on this prop? Yeah, 100%. 100%. I will keep you guys in the loop with it. Ah, as I'm looking at it, I only have an hour available for the show. We're 46 minutes into the likelihood of a call being more than 14. If we get somebody on the line, which we will, is a lot higher than... Uh, um... It's more likely than unlikely. You know, what I'm going to show you guys is how we've set up our CRM to be successful. And I think that will be a valuable share for all you guys. Let me just log into my Funnelytics account, which, by the way, is a fantastic uh, tool to use to map stuff. Although we are now moving to, um, to um, oh, no, what's it called? Um... What's it called here? It is a uh... well, I don't remember. I'm useless, guys. So let's just take a look at this here. So I'm going to share this with you. And I'm going to talk about the improvements that we're going to make to make it much more usable for our staff. All right. So this right here is what we've got. The idea is that each of these are a set of tiered pipelines that we push our leads through so that they get hundreds and hundreds of automated follow-ups tagged on them the longer that they are in our pipeline. So you'll see the way that it looks is very simple. Lead starts up here and it ends down here. Very simple. All of our leads are, of course, coming from paid sources, iSpeed and our custom, uh, our custom campaigns. When they come in, they're coming in, first they're getting validated, right? Phone call, if they pick up, then we're gonna start going through our sales process. If they don't pick up, then we're just gonna check and make sure that the address seems good, the name seems good, the phone number seems good, the email seems good, so that we can just track for data on uh, what the quality of our leads coming in is and what changes we need to make. Assuming it's good, we choose validated, and that boy pushes into our first pipeline, seven days of help. All three of these right here that you see, actually, if I go over them, it's going to lag out the system. That's why we're switching. All three of these right here are in the same group. This is stage one. This means that we've not contacted the lead and we haven't confirmed their motivation. That's it. We haven't confirmed that they're motivated to sell and we haven't been in contact with them. And they're in here. You got seven days of hell, 12 weeks of hell, 12 months of hell. And just like the name implies, this, this just determines the veracity of the follow-up. For seven days of hell, once a day, for seven days, they're going to get an automated email and text, as well as a phone call from us. If they don't respond in the seven days, then, ching, they move to 12 weeks, which is they're going to get an automated email, automated text, every day for seven days, and they're going to move up here. No response, 12 months, which is once a month email and text until... They don't respond for that 12 months and they loop straight back up to the top. It automates our follow-up and then we have cyclical um, um, copy types. So we've just got three or four different variants that are gonna get, put, gonna get pushed through. So two leads going through seven days of hell, they're probably gonna get different styles of copy or different, uh, different copy. 
on each day than other texts. That way it doesn't seem repetitive. Um, they send out at random variations of time, so it doesn't seem uh, automated. And the texts are worded to seem very human. It's not like, uh, hi, John, this is Liam with, you know, X and Y house partners. Here's why we're looking to, it's just, yo, John, you still looking to get an offer? Very, very simple. The texts are very simple and they drive responses. Once we get a yes response, meaning yes, we are motivated to sell, they move to stage two which is, as you can see, seven days after yes, 12 weeks after yes, 12 months after yes. It is the exact same as this in terms of the structure. The only difference is that the goal for this, the goal for this copy up here in stage one, to determine the motivation. The goal here is once we've determined motivation, we're gonna push them to our cash offer form. The cash offer form, it's a multi-step form that they have to go through even after they filled out our inbound form that is gonna get us a bunch of really specific information on the property like really, really specific information on the property. And it's gonna allow us to, it's like our idea of a virtual showing. It's our idea of a virtual showing. And that just allows us to get much deeper in the process with them. They're not gonna be, uh, they're not gonna go out and work with other people. Um, they're gonna use us and we've got what we've got going on. Once they fill out that form, and so all the emails and texts and links from the form, push them to it, all of our phone call, the goal is to either get them to do the form, uh, the form with us on the phone or just push them to do it uh, themselves. Then it moves to our offer review, where then um, me or other people in our organization are going to look at the numbers, comp it, figure out what's going on. And then it just moves to our, our uh, final stage, which, uh, which is our deal offer. This is where we're just going to present the offer we've put together. And as you can see, seven days, 12 weeks, exact same structure as before, but we just never moved to a monthly because once they fill this out and we've got an offer ready for them, we want that follow-up to be always at minimum um, a week from each other. We also do have some hidden things here that are gonna be, let's say somebody doesn't quite fit into this, like they, they've they maybe filled out the form, but they're not quite ready to sell, or they filled this out and they say, yeah, I wanna sell, but I'm just not ready yet. I'm not gonna fill out your form. If they don't conform to the structure, then we've got a couple of different pipelines that are gonna be what are called soft touch pipelines. So we've got a daily soft touch, which means like, yeah, I'll be ready to make a decision in a few days. And so that's just gonna be a very simple soft touch. Hey, just checking in, how's it going? How's it going? How's it going? We have a weekly soft touch, we have a monthly soft touch. And the, idea behind them is super simple. If somebody says, hey, I'm looking to sell in a year, we're going to throw them on the monthly soft touch where just once a month, they're going to get a text like, hey, I know you weren't looking to sell for a while, but we're just checking in, seeing how you're doing. And we've got a bunch of different copy styles and we're always building them out. So we've got hundreds and hundreds of automations built in. This is how we leverage our time. So now our salespeople do not need to come in and uh, I'm going to stop sharing this by the way, guys. Um, our salespeople do not need to come in and know how to text, email, um, and do all the extra stuff. They can just focus on coming in and going on the phone. The software, it, it compiles them all into a dialer every morning based upon who they need to call and who's in their uh, different pipelines. And then it'll push them to the to the uh, the call sessions at different times of the day. So now our salespeople, when they come in in the morning from nine to 10, they just have to call one list. 10 to 11, they call the next list. 11 to 12, they call another list. And they go on you know, lunch, they come back. And so we set them up for success. We set them up for success. So that right there is how we set up our uh, our pipelines to nurture nurture success within individuals. Super valuable, super scalable. Because when you think about it, right? Most people, what they do is they have a task-based follow-up, meaning they have a lead, they set a task. They have a lead, they set a task. They have a lead, they set a task over and over and over and over and over again. The problem of what ends up happening is that when they're setting these tasks, they're not scaling, it's not scalable. Every single lead adds another task and another task. So now if they have 10,000 leads in the pipeline, one of two things is gonna happen. They're either going to have 10,000 tasks that they follow up with every day. Nobody's gonna do that. Or they're gonna start falling behind and they're gonna create a culture of not following through on their tasks because there's too many. The salespeople get overwhelmed. So the only solutions are A, hire more salespeople, or B, follow up with less leads. When you follow up with less, Oh, excuse me. When you follow up with less leads, what we know the outcome is is that you get less deals. The fortune is in the follow-up. The fortune is in the follow-up. So that's my uh, that's my two cents on how to set up a really successful system on the uh, sales side of things, and then on the marketing side of things. I explained that earlier. You got to think things through very sequentially and just create a repeatable process that can be gone through every single time, time and time again. And actually, what I'm going to give you guys right now is a framework for how to develop. Tom, Ke oh, Tom Caparella from Boston. Text me, Gene. Text me, Gene.
Oh, okay. I see. see. Tom Crawford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number one wholesaler. They've been following me up for two years now. You see what I'm saying? Look at that. That's the level that these people are going to be running at. Once they know you own a home and you might be interested in selling, the top people are not going to stop following up with you. They're not going to stop. And if you are giving up on follow-up, you're throwing away money, especially if you're doing a pay-per-lead model or you're getting inbound leads where the cost per lead is going to be higher. Develop the culture of excellence on the cheaper lead forms. If you're driving for dollars, assign each value to a lead of $1,000. Mentally tell yourself that if I stop following up on this, this is like me taking 10 $100 bills, crumpling them up and throwing them away. You could even go out and buy a whole bunch of fake bills and put them on your desk. You've only got a certain amount. And whenever you want to throw a lead away, you've got to take that bill, crumple it up and toss it. The only time you are not allowed to crumple up a bill and toss it away is for one of two reasons. One is they sold the house. Two is that they died. They don't want it. They DNC'd on all platforms. They, it's impossible to contact them. Either you're going to get sued if you contact them again, or it's impossible to get in contact with them. Only two reasons right there. I didn't even want to sell nothing. I was just funnel hacking them. They just fucking called me again twice too. You see, the follow-up is what creates the wealth, 100%. So the follow-up long-term is going to be what, what gets it done. And by the way, that CRM that I just showed you guys, we're going to be making it commercially available sometime soon. I don't have a time frame, um, but we're going to be making some form of it commercially available, like a simplified version with some simplified training. And... Um, we're going to be releasing it either to iSpeed members or just as a special offer. We're not quite certain on what we're going to do yet, but we're putting together a whole bunch of packages for you guys because we know that the leads aren't going to be the only thing that will sustain your business. It's going to be the heartbeat, but we got to start building the skeletal muscles around it. Everything that holds the body together. So we're going to be doing sales training, systems training. We're going to be putting tons of stuff together for you guys so that you can be successful and you can foster a culture of excellence within your business. You guys can go from chasing your next deal to get a consistent deal flow. And you guys can, got, can go from getting a consistent two, three deals a month to be getting a consistent 10, 15, 20 deals a month. Kenneth, Kenneth, no, I think you're, I didn't ask very many deep questions. I got, I got kind of slapped in the face there. Could be 110 over mortgage, perhaps more strategic Q&A with him. You are 100% right. I, I, I lost my sauce on that call. I got a little, uh, for football, because I was just like, what? I also haven't admittedly have not been on the phones as much as I should have. So I'm not, I'm not 100% in the zone. Usually I like to do a couple warm up calls, but with all the audio systems that I have not working, it just wasn't there. But how do you guys like the new camera? Look, usually I just film from my phone and I've got like the nice iPhone 13 Pro, which makes it, you know, decent quality, but it's not fantastic. Now look at this. I've got a legit camera, a legitimate camera right here. Let's see if it does it has like an autofocus feature and stuff. Okay, well that's not working. Uh, look, when I do that, you guys can see where the uh, <laughs> where my camera cuts off. Ignore that. I've got to get better lights on my green screen. Guys, if we are 59 minutes into the stream. I had to end at 20. I had to end 20 minutes ago. Um, but uh, I love you guys. We are going to be live again tomorrow over the weekend. YouTube blocked us. I'm not 100% certain why. I think it was a copyright issue because they don't like the sound of the phone. Um, so, yeah. But we are going to be live again tomorrow at 12 o'clock Central Time. Mark it on your calendars. It is going to be every day for the rest of the Closer 66 Challenge, which, by the way, I didn't talk about. You can read about it in the description. Click on that link. It's amazing. The best challenge ever. And I will talk to you guys soon. Love you guys. Peace out.